Hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and I'm going to be showing you all here, if you have a PlayStation 3 console, how you can install PS3 HIN on it. Now, the nice thing is, this works right off the bat here with all models of the PS3, meaning this will work on the fat system, the slim system, and even the super slim system. So, none of these console models are left behind, thankfully. Now, what exactly is PS3 HIN? PS3 HIN is, well, a PlayStation 3 homebrew enabler, and it does just that. It enables your console to run homebrew. So homebrew means you'll be able to, of course, play your backup games and have fun with that, but you'll also get access to other pieces of homebrew, such as Monoguns here, which is a backup loader on here for your games. You got something like Apollo Save Tool, which allows you to modify, manipulate saves, and do so much more on the system. Right here, we have the PS2 Classics placeholder, which allows you to play encrypted PS2 games from ISOs on your PS3, which will be required if you are doing it like that for PS3 HIN, and it allows you to do so much more. Now, this doesn't give you the full capability of your system like a full custom firmware with a jailbreak would. However, as I said, the main benefit with this is that unlike a custom firmware that only works on fat models and some of the slim models of the PS3, PS3 HIN will work on every single model of the PS3. And while it does not allow you to do everything a fully fledged custom firmware would allow you to do, I'd say it does pretty much most of what anybody who wants a modified PlayStation 3 wants to do with their system. So PS3 HIN will work just fine for most people right out the gate. Now, in order to get started here, we're going to need a few things. First of all, we're going to of course need our PS3 up and running and working. You'll also need an original OEM Sony PlayStation PlayStation 3 controller, as well as a mini USB cable so we can boot up into safe mode to do a couple of firmware installs. On top of that, we're also going to need a USB flash drive, we're going to need internet on our PS3 and on a computer nearby because we're going to need the computer to download a few files, transfer them over to the USB flash drive, and then run what we need to on our PS3. With those prerequisites out of the way, let's go ahead and change a few settings that we're going to need here on the PS3 before we get started. So what you can do is come over here, go over to your settings, and we're going to go over to the system settings. Now, once you're inside of your system settings, one of the first things that you should do is disable automatic update. That way, your system in the future does not automatically update the firmware and you accidentally lose your PS3 HIN install. It is also recommended to change display what's new to off. And finally, one thing you can also check here to make sure your PS3 is currently compatible is go down to the system information section to check the firmware. Now, once you're here, check the system software version and make sure that the version number is the same or a lower number than what the title is of this video. Because if this is the same number or lower, that means you'll be able to follow along with this video and we'll get you up to date. If it is a higher version, unfortunately, you're going to have to wait until PS3 HIN has been updated for your firmware version. And if you're on a lower firmware version than what the title of this video shows, do not worry about it because again, we are going to get updated to the point where we need to be here. I also want to take some time out to talk about future firmware updates because you might be watching this video in the future where there is a newer firmware than the firmware that I am recording this video on right now. And that is because really the install method is going to be the same on here. However, if you want to be safe, you can always check the PS3 exploit site, which will be linked down below in the description. And you can come over here to recommended firmware. Now, as you can see, we can look at PS3 HIN, and at the time of recording, the highest supported firmware is 4.91, meaning that if you have a system running firmware 4.91 or lower, you can run PS3 HIN successfully. However, in the future, there will be higher firmware versions that are out. And typically, these tools are updated pretty fast thanks to the dedication of the team here. And another nice thing is the install method itself for PS3 HIN really does not change. So in the future with newer firmware updates, if the install method is going to be the same here, but it's on a higher firmware, I plan to update the metadata and the title of this video to show that higher firmware supported version, because again, that will mean that it is supported and the process is going to be the same. But that is just to let you all know, in case the numbers you're seeing on your screen are different than the ones in the video, no need to panic. That just means the process is going to be same on a newer firmware. Now with all that out of the way, you should be ready to get started here. So at this point, if you are all good to go, make sure you grab a USB flash drive, 
take it over to your computer and get ready to download a few files. The first site you'll need to go to is the official PS3 exploit site, which will be linked down below in the description of this video. Again, right here, you can see the firmware version, which is supported for PS3 HIN, and you can download the latest HFW from here, which will be the modified firmware we will need in order to continue on with this. Now, I will have a separate link to the HFW download, and typically it is from a release page similar to this or a form post. Now, it does change up a little bit from time to time here, but as you can see, you can find the link for this right here, which you can go ahead, click this, and download it. However, you might run into something like that if they are just linking the direct pup file. So if you cannot get the page to load or a download to start successfully, you might just have to right click this and click on save link as, and then save the file somewhere you can easily find it. But keep this page on hand because we are going to need the MD5 hash for later. In case the firmware is in an archive file such as a zip or a 7-zip or a RAR archive, then you might need something such as 7-zip. If it is, you can download whichever version of the software works for your operating system and then install it. It's easy, it's free, and it should get the job done. I did mention an MD5 hash and we are going to need to check it, so I am going to have an MD5 hashing tool linked down below in the description. Now you could use your own application if you want to, but I'm using this online one here, which seems to work well enough. We will have to also format our USB drive to make sure it works specifically on the PS3, and an easy way of doing that here is using Rufus. You can come to this page, scroll down here, and download the latest build of this. Typically, I download the portable version here just because I don't need to install it. However, if you choose to install it, the 64-bit version is here, or the 32-bit or x86 version is right here, depending on which setup of Windows you have. The last download you'll need here is some homebrew because, well, this is a homebrew enabler. So typically, the starter homebrew that I do recommend is going to be Multiman. You can go to the link down below in the description, click on Multiman right here, and for this, there's going to be a few versions, but I recommend getting the HIN specific version. Now, some people get worried because it says 4.84, and you do not have to worry about the version number here working on a lower firmware. It's still going to work on a higher firmware, thankfully, but it would be recommended to get the unofficial HIN version because this one is a bit more stable for PS3 HIN users. Again, just download this and save it somewhere you can easily find it. And with that, all of our downloads should be complete. With our downloads completed, it should look something like this. You should have Rufus, you should have your HFW, and whatever homebrew that you want. If you want to download and install more homebrew, feel free to. However, this is going to be, at minimum, what we're going to be installing here. So let's format the USB drive first. In order to do this, plug your USB drive into your computer, and double click on Rufus. When this pops up, say yes. And if you want to allow it to check for updates, you can. Now Rufus should look like this. And as you can see, I have a 16 gigabyte USB drive that I've plugged in, which should work just fine. You're going to want to select your USB drive right here. And if for some reason your drive is not showing, you might need to go to show advanced drive properties and list USB hard drives. However, this is working just fine here. So for our USB flash drive, it is showing up. We can continue on. For boot selection, you're going to select non-bootable. And here's the two options that are going to be most important. The first one is partition scheme must be MBR. If it is GPT, it will not work on your PS3. You have to have it be MBR. Secondly, the file system must be FAT32. As long as it is MBR and FAT32, it will work. If you do not have these two set up properly, this will not work for your PS3. You can set the volume label to whatever you want to, but once you're ready to go, we can go ahead and format our drive. Now do keep in mind, right here, this is going to erase all the data that we care about on this drive. So if there's any data that is important to you, go into your drive, back it up to your computer, and then format it. Just keep that in mind, you are going to be warned. But once you're ready to format, we can close out of any windows like this, click on start. As long as you understand the warning, you can click on okay, and then wait a few seconds for this to complete. And once it is completed, you can click on the close button because we're done with Rufus. Now you should be able to check your USB drive. If you right click it, go to the properties and look at file system, it should now show up as FAT32. And at this point, we can now work on getting all the files copied over. So we can go into our USB drive directly and we're going to first make a new folder. We're going to right click, create a new folder, and we're going to call it PS3, all uppercase, all one word. Inside of the PS3 folder, we must make a new folder, and we're going to call this one, all uppercase, all one word, 
update. Now inside of the update folder, you need to grab your HFW, right click and copy this, and then paste it inside of the update folder. Give it a few seconds to copy over. Now to check the file name, if you're on Windows, you'll have to go to View and Show File Name Extensions, and it should be a .pup file. If it is not, it might be an archive, depending on what is uploaded, if it is a zip or a 7z or a RAR file. So if it's one of those, you might have to just use 7zip to right click and extract it out. However, we do not need to do that if we have a pup file right here. But we do have to rename this file. So we are just going to click on this and we're going to rename it. So it should look exactly like this, ps 3 updatpup Click here and it should be renamed successfully. So that is the structure that we need. Again, it must be a PUP file, which is why it's important to make sure you have your file name extensions enabled. The final step for our firmware file is to double check and make sure that it downloaded properly. So we need to check the MD5 checksum on here. For this here, we can use the online MD5 file checksum in which you can either drag the file from your USB drive here or click on drop file here. For this, you must navigate specifically to your USB drive, go into the PS3 folder, update folder, and grab the ps 3 updatepup file. Then give it a few seconds to hash. Once it's been completed, it should give you a hash value like this. What you'll need to do is find the hash value associated with that firmware download and check it right here. Now, you are going to have to use your eyes to check this here, and do keep in mind, it is all capital letters here. While over on the online tool, the letters will be lowercase, but keep in mind, this is not case sensitive. You just have to make sure the letters and the numbers match between here and between the official download. And once you have verified the MD5 hash is matching, then you can continue on. Thankfully, the next copy is going to be much easier. You're going to need to get your homebrew file, and it's going to be a PKG file with whichever homebrew you downloaded. In my example, I'm going to be using Multiman. For this, all you need to do is right click and copy Multiman, then go to your USB drive, and in the root of your USB drive next to the PS3 folder, right click and paste, and give it a few seconds to copy. Once that's done, it should look exactly like this. You should have your PS3 folder, and you should have any packages that you want to install outside the PS3 folder. Again, homebrew is going to go here and your update should be in PS3, update, and it should be renamed to ps 3 updatepup After it has been verified, of course, once that's all done, we can come back out here, right click, eject our USB drive, and now take it to the PS3. Most of the work is now going to be there. With our USB drive set up properly, make sure it is plugged into the PS3, and you can navigate over to the video tab, or even the music tab, any of these others, and look for your USB device. As long as it is showing up here, that means that you have successfully set up your USB drive. Now we need to work on updating our firmware to HFW. You have to do this on any firmware, even if you are on the same firmware version, and it is recommended to do it twice. So the first time here, we can try it through the XMB. Now what you need to do is make sure your USB drive is plugged in, navigate over to settings, go all the way to the top to system update, and inside the system update, go down to update via storage media. And once it finds your HFW, that means you should be good to continue on. Tap OK. Please wait a bit, and it should load in the Terms of Service. Now once you read through the Terms of Service and you're okay with everything here, navigate over, hit Accept, go down to Start, tap X, and give it a few moments to copy over. It's now going to copy the update to your PS3 console and then reboot the system and then update. Now once your system does a soft reboot, it should bring you to the System Update screen. From here you can press the PlayStation button on your controller, and it should begin installing. All you have to do here is wait. Now, if it does something where it gets through the install and then all of a sudden it jumps to 100% and reboots, that means that the firmware has been installed successfully. There's no need to panic. That is expected behavior. And secondly, if you try to update through the XMB and you get an error saying that you're on the same version or it is not able to install the update, don't worry. The second method is going to be for you, which will be installing through safe mode. I'm going to cover that next. Now here we go, once your system reboots, it's going to look the exact same as before, and that is to be expected. Nothing is going to appear differently on here. However, if you've installed the firmware successfully one time, you're now going to need to do it a second time, this time through safe mode. This is where you're going to need a PlayStation 3 controller, 
a mini USB cable, plug the cable and controller into the console, and from here, you're going to need to turn off the PS3 and then turn it on in a specific way. What you'll need to do is physically go over to the PS3 and hold down the power button on the console. It's going to power on, but keep it held down until the console turns off. Once it turns off, do the exact same thing by holding down the power button, but this time around you're going to wait until you hear two quick beeps. As soon as you hear two quick beeps, let go of the power button. If you see this screen, you should be in safe mode, and just like it says, connect your controller using USB cable, then press the PS button. Once you're in safe mode, go down to the option for system update and tap the X button to continue. It's going to ask for your firmware, so make sure your USB drive is still plugged in, and then press the start and select buttons at the same time. It will now begin checking your USB drive for that HFW file. Once it's verified the file is there, it's now going to begin the process of preparing to update. Just go ahead, let it do its thing, and wait for the next step. Just like before, it's going to bring you to a system update page where you can press the PS button. It's going to check for the update file yet again. And from here, make sure you understand that you've read through the user agreement. Once that's been done, you can accept it if you so choose to and then tap the X button to begin the update process. It's now going to install this firmware update again. Now, just like before, if it installs it part way and then it jumps to 100% and reboots, that is to be expected, nothing is wrong there. That means it's been applied successfully. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is you must do two installs of this firmware. Now, it doesn't matter which way you do them, you could do one through the X and B and one through safe mode, or you can do both of them through the X and B if you're able to, or you can do both of them through safe mode if you want to. It does not matter, but it is most recommended to have two good installs completed of HFW. This is mainly recommended to minimize any possible install errors, and mainly so we can get ROS0 and ROS1 on the internal firmware matching. Once your safe mode installation is complete, your system should reboot and it'll bring you to this screen here. You're going to have to just adjust your audio video output, so from here, you can turn on your controller and say yes. And as long as you can see everything on screen here, once the resolution changes, you can say yes again, and now continue on. With our video output settings now dialed in, you should have completed two successful installs of HFW. Now again, the system is not going to look any differently, but if you've done those two installs, you should be ready to continue on. Now with that, make sure your PS3 is connected to the internet. Now this step here is optional, but if you want to make use of PS3 HINs on the fly licensing or relicensing capabilities for any type of PSN based packages that you might install, you do need to activate your console on PSN. So there's a couple ways of doing this here. If you want to do it now, you can go to the PlayStation Network column. You can go ahead and sign into your PSN account. And from here, you can step through the process of activating your console. Once it has been activated, you should be good to go. However, if you do not want to sign into PSN or if you cannot for whatever reason, don't worry, you could also do this later on once you have PS3 HIN installed using the Apollo save tool. I'm not going to go into details with that here, but I do have a video dedicated to that if you want to activate your system offline. But you can use whichever method will work best for you, because we're now going to go through the process of finally installing PS3 HIN. For this here, you can navigate over to the network column and open up the internet browser. And there's going to be some prerequisite work that we need to complete. When this comes up, tap the triangle button, go up to tools, and inside of here, we're going to need to change a few things. Go to confirm browser close, and we're going to change this to off. Next, go back into your tools and change the home page to use blank page. Then hit OK. We go to tools once again, and this time around, we're now going to clean up the browser by deleting cookies. We now need to delete search history. We need to delete cache. And finally, we can delete authentication information. With all that deleted, tap the circle button to exit out, and the browser should now close without a prompt. Once that's been closed out, the browser has been cleaned up essentially, so we can now open up the internet browser, and we're going to start the process of loading up the web exploit. When you get your blank page, tap the start button, and we're going to erase this here, and this is the website we're going to go to. It should look exactly like this here. It will be http colon slash slash ps3exploit.me. It will look exactly like this. It is spelled exactly like this. 
and keep in mind the word exploit does not have an E in it. So once you have this address here, you're going to go down to start or enter and wait for the page to load. Now when it loads in, you're probably going to get a new type of message of the day here essentially. You can read it and tap OK. And the first thing you should do once you tap through that is hit the select button on your controller and add this page to your bookmarks. We can close out of there so that way we can always access this later on. Now let's go ahead and install PS3 HIN. For this, you can come up here, go to PS3 HIN, and the exact page that we're going to be looking for is going to be the HIN auto installer. This is the newer one here, and this is the one that is most recommended because it seems to work quite well and it does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. For this, you can tap X on here and it should open up in a new tab. And there's going to be a file that will automatically start downloading. Once it downloads, we can hit back and that's all done. It is worth noting here before we continue on with the PS3 install, as it shows in big red letters on the front of the PS3 exploit page for PS3 HIN, do not enable FSM factory service mode with PS3 HIN. Do not install CC API with PS3 HIN. These are two big warnings here that are put here on purpose because you can cause damage to your system if you do either one of these. Now, thankfully, this is nothing that you can do accidentally, but you'll be surprised with people getting their consoles into factory service mode or installing CC API on PS3 HIN. You've been warned at this point. Now, at this point, I recommend you hit the select button on the PS3 HIN auto installer, add this to your bookmarks, close out of here, and for the best rate of success, go ahead and now close out of the browser. It should bring you back here, but now we can open up the browser yet again, and we can make use of those bookmarks. Once we're here, tap the select button, go to the PS3 HIN auto installer, and load it up. Now it is going to ask you to download this file again, so we can overwrite and save. Give it a few moments to download, and once it's been completed, hit the back button, and at this point here, it is pretty self-explanatory. You just have to tap X on auto install HIN. So hit that there. And it should now give you a message saying auto HIN installer has been completed successfully. So now it's going to work on the process of installing HIN. And as you can see, it was able to set up the initial stages of HIN here. But now it's going to download a package file. So just wait for this package to download. Don't touch the controller. Now do keep in mind, it's not always going to be as seamless as what I showed right there. Occasionally you might have to try a few times and it might even give you an error sometimes saying that you have to reboot the console and try again. If that happens, reboot the console, try again, open up that bookmark directly, and it should hopefully work for you. And once this download is complete, we can now hit back and we're going to wait. It now needs to install this package. So again, just give it a few moments to do so. Now, once that's been installed, as you can see, it's going to prepare for reboot. So don't touch your controller and let your console automatically reboot. So here we go. Your system should now be rebooted. It should boot up a little differently. And in the game column, there should be a new option here that says enable HIN. Well, at this point now, your system has been modified, but we need to actually make use of it. So go ahead and tap the option here to enable HIN and give it a few moments. It's going to open up your browser. You don't have to touch anything here, but it's going to go through this process of running the necessary payloads and then enabling PS3 HIN. Now you should have your package manager right here. If you do, that means that you've successfully installed and activated PS3 HIN. Do keep in mind, there's times where you might enable HIN and the package manager does not come up. If that happens, just try to enable HIN again. And if that still doesn't work, reboot your system completely Make sure you turn on your system again, and then try to enable HIN. And you can tell that it's been enabled properly because the package manager will show up. Now the package manager is so important because not only it shows that HIN is working in the background, but you are able to, well, install packages from here. So make sure your USB drive is still plugged in. Now go to your package manager, go to install package files, go to standard, and you can pick any of the homebrew packages that you've put on the root of your USB drive. Hopefully you should have Multiman here, so if you're ready to install it, tap the X button on this and give it a few moments. It's now going to install it directly from your USB drive to the internal storage of the console. And this is how any type of homebrew installations are going to work. So once that's done, go back and you should now have a new option here or a new application called Multiman. With HIN enabled, go ahead, tap Multiman and boot it up. Now, if this is your first time using Multiman, you will have to go through the agreement here. Make sure you understand this. 
And once you are all okay with that, it would take some time to install the MMCM data to the internal drive. And it's going to do a little bit of a reboot here. Once the standard theme is applied, check this out. We are now in Multiman. Congratulations, you should hopefully be running your first piece of PS3 homebrew on here. Now, I do have a few games that are showing up because these are games that I had installed prior when I had PS3 hen on this system before. I'm not going to be covering game installation here. However, if you need a full rundown and tutorial over Multiman itself, I will have one linked down below in the description. But one thing you can do while you're here, which I always recommend, is go over to settings, go all the way down to one specific setting here. It's going to be theme audio, and I recommend just changing that to disabled. And once that's all done, you should be good to continue on here. From here, you can back up your own PS1, PS2, PS3 games. If you're ripping PS2 games from disc, you can use this section here, the retro section, to encrypt them as PS2 classics so they would actually run on PS3 HIN. And you can also use FTP capabilities, meaning that you can hook up your system to your local area network and then transfer files from your computer to the console using your network. It's a pretty nice application that allows you to do all that. However, we're not going to be covering that here. I really just wanted to show you all how you can download and install and run a piece of homebrew. So with that at least completed, we can now come here, bring up the XMB, and we're going to quit out of Multiman. Once you exit out of Multiman, it is going to change its name on your XMB to MMCM. And don't worry about that, that is to be expected. However, as you can see, you're pretty much good to go here. Now, I do want to cover some basics of PS3 HIN and just some general usage. For that, I'm actually going to restart the console here so I can show you how this all looks from a fresh boot up. So for some of the basics of PS3 HIN, first of all, we no longer need our USB flash drive, so you are welcome to unplug it. Now, keep in mind, every single time you fully reboot your PS3, or if you decide to play a PS2 game and then exit out of it, you are going to need to re-enable HIN yet again. And having HIN running is going to be necessary for any type of homebrew, any type of utilities, any type of emulators, or any type of re-signed games in order for them to boot up. If you try to open up anything that you've installed through PS3 HIN without enabling HIN, you are going to get an error message. So one of the most iconic ones I'll show you is let's try and run Multiman right off the bat. As you can see, it will give you an 800-117 error, meaning that you did not activate PS3 HIN. So to fix that, it's pretty easy. You just have to come up to enable HIN, tap this option right here to enable it, and wait for HIN to enable. Another nice benefit as well too, is that even though you needed the internet to set up PS3 HIN, you no longer have to stay connected to the internet. So if you want to disconnect your console from the internet, that is just fine. You can still enable HIN even when you're offline. And here, like I said, the package manager does show up. And now if we try to boot up Multiman, we can give this a shot. And as you can see, look at that. Multiman was able to boot up without any issues. So that is just an example right there. It seems to hang up a lot of people, but if you're getting an error like that, remember anytime you're trying to run any of your backup games, any homebrew, emulators, tools, any of that, you have to make sure HIN has been enabled. Now let's go ahead and exit out of Multiman here and get back to the XMB. When you exit out of here, the nice thing is you do not have to keep enabling HIN. In fact, enable HIN ends up disappearing. Just keep this in mind, if your package manager is showing up, that means that HIN has been enabled. The only time you need to re-enable HIN is if your PS3 completely powers down and you turn it back on, or if you play a PS2 game and you exit out of that PS2 game. Those are the times you need to re-enable HIN to run any of the other games or applications that are right here. You also get a nice new section right here in the network column called PS3 Exploit Home. There's actually a couple of them here, but if you ever need to access the PS3 Exploit website immediately, you can come over to the PS3 Exploit Home option, and once this loads in here, check this out. As long as you're connected to the internet, it should load up the PS3 Exploit website. So we can close out of there. One of the last things here is going to be the hybrid firmware tools, and this will show up every time you enable PS3 HIN. So you can come in here, 
and you have a whole lot of options that you can check through. Now, I do recommend don't just go crazy here. You are going to want to at least read these and see what they do, because most of them will probably not be for you, but it's some other nice options that you have available here on your now modified PS3 console. Now, if you've been able to follow this tutorial successfully, I do want to give a shout out and a thank you, and I do recommend you also give your thanks to the PS3 exploit team. Without them here, this would not have been possible, and they've done a fantastic job really just heading this for several, several years now at this point, making some really awesome tools, developments, and not only that, but even hosting them and keeping them maintained for the masses here. So a big thank you and shout out goes to them. If you do support their work and you like what they do, they do always take donations, which are available on their PS3 exploit site right here. So if you've gotten any type of value out of their work, I would always recommend throwing a donation their way. They definitely deserve it. Anyways, that is about it for this video here. Here. Hopefully you should have taken your stock PlayStation 3 and you should now be running the latest version of PS3 Hen on the latest firmware available. It's a pretty nice tool right here and you should be able to hopefully have a lot more fun with your PS3 and squeeze some more power out of it. Anyways, that is about it for this video here. As I always say, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated and if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too.